Welcome to the How to Play Battletech Advanced Tactics Series, Commander. This video is intended to be a definitive guide on how to get the most out of the initiative phase in Classic Battletech. In order to bring you the very best information available on YouTube, I interviewed players who consistently find success in online global tournaments and incorporated their strategies and tactics into this guide. If you're one of the few people who make it to the end of this video, you'll be well on your way to mastering Classic Battletech. Let's get started. Okay, let's go over initiative and what you need to know in Classic Battletech in order to be successful. So, uh, rules as written, it's really quite simple. Roll 2d6 to compare with your opponent. Loser goes first, and uh, you take alternating activations in Battletech, meaning uh, you pick a unit to go, you move it, and then they pick a unit to go, and then they move it, and so on and so forth, um, until pretty much all the mechs um, are activated. There's some, uh, some edge cases when you outnumber your opponent or they outnumber you, but that's mostly it. Um, while that may seem very simple at first glance, it really has a big impact on how the game plays out and a very large impact as well on, uh, on how you go about building lances and building optimal lances. I think that's a, a question that mm, is often asked, um, I see in the comments, quite a bit. So we're going to be going over initiative phase and building up um, to answering that question. Okay, and I would argue that even more than the movement phase itself, that playing the initiative properly, uh, you can use it to outmaneuver your opponents um, by selecting which units to activate and in which sequence. So your challenge here is you're given command of these six mechs, uh, reinforced lance or um, whatever you want to call it. And um, yeah, you're given this lance. What sequence do you activate these mechs in, um, generally speaking? Um, and there is a there there is a right answer in my opinion, um, but yeah, this is this is going to be general advice. Of course, there's going to be edge cases and side cases, but we're going to talk about um, things that cover you know ninety percent of what you need to know, and and you're going to make adjustments on the fly. Okay, okay. So activating early, um, we're going to go through each of the phases now. Activating early to activating late, and then um, we're going to put it all together and uh, give some. Mm, other 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 advice, other things to keep in mind. But we're starting off with activating early. Okay, activating early. So when you activate a mech early, that uh, that's a very risky position um, to to activate in. Right? Why? Because we're activating with very little information. Um, neither of your opponent's mechs have gone. You don't know where they're moving. So yeah, um, you're, you're putting yourself at risk. Uh, the enemy will know where you are and can counterattack or evade you. So your goal in this stage is really the mechs that are activating early are more like enablers. Um, they're really team players. Um, they're they're playing for their teammates. They're trying to help uh, their teammates activate later. They're kind of sacrificing themselves um, to to enable their team. Okay. So your goal as a mech that activates early is you want to get in position where your damage potential is not wasted and you don't get flanked. So you want to play kind of defensively. Um, and also make sure that uh, you can't get, you know, you can't end up like this guy. You can't have them destroyed. Okay, so what type of mechs should go early? Generally speaking, generally speaking, uh, tanky and range mechs should activate early, and fast and low value mechs um, should also activate early. And we're going to go over um, some examples here. So one example is the awesome 8Q, very, very tanky mech, no ammo explosion risk, three PPCs for long range. Just sort of sets up like an artillery mech sets up and pounds the enemy so this is the ideal kind of an ideal mech that you want to activate early another one being the locust 1v very cheap mech the archer 2r very similar to the awesome a um, little bit of ammo but very well padded two lrm 20s for very long range so also just sets up and pounds the enemy and uh the griffin as well ppc uh lrm 10 sets up and you know snipes picks away at the enemy um, very, very tanky as well for a medium mech. Very well armored. Okay, so why specifically tanky and range mechs? Well, they're tanky enough to take punishment, and they're far away enough. They usually set up far away enough not to get flanked. So you're usually having your guard mechs or your battle line mechs uh, intercept um, enemies uh, so that these guys don't, don't, get, uh, don't get enemies behind them. So under normal conditions, you're normally activating these guys um, relatively early. Um, because they're tanky and they, they don't get flanked. Okay, um, we're gonna take an example. We're gonna take a look at an example here. Um, they threaten large areas with their range attacks. Um, the enemy can't hide. So in this example, we have uh, a 
Hunchback's effective range, um, six X's. So medium range is usually uh, where you want to be. Technically, the AC20 goes out to nine hexes, but we're looking at six X's here because, um, yeah, you, you really want to, in a fight, um, be in medium range or closer. So we have three opponents here. <clears throat> and the Hunchback's, um, we're looking at the Hunchback's range. So it's really difficult if you have to activate this mech now um, to decide where you want to go, right? Um, do you push out of cover to try and get in range of the Vindicator here? Do you stay put? Um, if you stay put here, then these mechs can get on the edge, right? Can get the, on the edge of your effective range. And then uh, and then close the gap um, later on. Um, so very hard to make a decision as, as, as the Hunchback here, right? Do you stay put? Do you push forward? Even if you push forward, the enemy knows where you're going to go. And then they can start flanking you. They can start um hiding from you you know just dancing out of that um out of that hit six hex range or you know finding um gaps to kind of close in compare this to the archers um archers range we're looking at the lrm 20s and the archer uh medium range for the for the lrm is 14 hexes so in this example you're covering you're targeting pretty much all three mechs now it's very hard for the enemy mechs to evade right where do they go they can even if they close in with you they're not going to close all the way in um, and you're still going to be able to hit at least one of them uh, reasonably well. So, um, yeah, because you're able to reach out and, and hit these three guys, um, you, you generally want to activate this guy early. Um, in, a, in a more realistic, quote-unquote, example, you probably have blockers here. So you'd have, you know, bodyguard or battle line mechs kind of um, up here to, to intercept. But I kind of want to keep this, um, this printout, I guess, simple to understand. Okay. So why fast, low-value mechs? Well, uh, fast, low-value mechs are useful in lances because they can perform the initiative sync, or also known as the delaying move. Um, in it, a mech is essentially wasting their turn to see in one or another one of the opponent's moves. So you're trading mech activation for information. So you're basically sacrificing a small portion of your army um, to get more information. You're buying more information with this mech. Example, Locust 1V is 432 BV. In an 8,000 uh, point game or 8,000 BV game, that's only 5%, 5.4% of your total BV. So you're throwing away a small portion of your army, um, just sacrificing it to see another turn of one of their bigger mechs. Okay? This is very valuable, as we'll see going, uh, going, through, this, um, going through this presentation. Okay, so I'm going to show you the initiative sync here. The, here we have an enemy Warhammer in red. Uh, the circle means they are unactivated. We have a friendly Thunderbolt in blue, also unactivated. And we have our initiative sinker, our Locust, um, also unactivated. So you're pretty much going to activate the, uh, the Locust early on the initiative. <clears throat> this forces the opponent to play another move, right? So we just move, we tuck the Locust away into a pretty safe spot so it can't get hit. Um, I'd imagine there's a, you know, kind of piece of cover here. So now the Warhammer has to make a decision. It decides to stay put. And then our Thunderbolt um, is able to counterattack. So by activating this mech early, we enable the Thunderbolt to get um, to get a melee attack off or, or get into whatever position it wants. It's able to see where this Warhammer is going to go and make the best decision. Okay, as a bonus, uh, moving to the side here is completely okay, completely fine. But what's really good is if you can get in a position to threaten an attack on the next move. So here, um, instead of moving... Uh, to the bottom left corner where it's relatively useless. It won't, can't really attack anything or do anything on the next turn. The Locust here is thinking ahead, and it's moving behind the Warhammer. Even though it can't hit the Warhammer on this turn, on the following turn, uh, it's going to be able to get, get more easily get a flank off, right? Um, if, if, it, if, it, if it's able to activate late. If it has to activate early and burn its turn again, um, it, still can do, it still can do the same thing. So it's keeping its options open. Okay. Activating in the middle. So we've covered activating early. Now we're going to talk about activating in the middle. Situation with activating in the middle, you can act with some information, right? So some of your opponent's mechs have gone. Some of um, your allied mechs have gone. You can still be flanked and invaded. So generally the goal here is you want to get uh, these mechs into a good range bracket. So every mech will usually have an ideal range bracket you want to be. For the Thunderbolt, it's a brawler. So we want to get into six hexes or less. And we still want to limit, um, limit risk. So who's good activating in the middle? Um, either high or medium armor mechs, so mechs that are relatively high in defensive stats um, who can get into their optimal ranges, or medium value mechs, so modestly valued mechs um, with flexible ranges, right? And we'll, and we'll see that uh, coming up. So some examples, Thunderbolt, uh, the TDR5S, always a classic pick. Centurion CS9, 
very similar to the Thunderbolt in design. Um, both of them have LRMs. Both of them have um, one has a large laser, one has an AC-10 with the same range bracket, and then they the Centurion has a medium laser. Uh, the Thunderbolt is a little more heavily armed with three medium lasers. Locust 1V, again, making a um, making an appearance. Um, again, you can use the Locust as an initiative sync in this phase as well if you need to, if you need to buy another turn. Um, the Orion 1V, um, LRM, AC-10, couple couple lasers, and an SRM as well. And the Crab with uh, two large lasers and a medium laser. But really, the two large lasers and the all-energy build. So all-energy build makes it very, very tanky. The two large lasers all have a decent range, um, which makes it quite flexible. Okay, so we'll look at the Thunderbolt 5S here. High defense helps it survive, 208 armor. Um, weapons mix makes it very flexible, right? So it can shoot with its LRM-15 and large laser, though it's not ideal. But it does, it can get at least some value off of this if um, if it's not in if it's not in brawl range. Um, and the brawl range is ideal, right? We really want to be closing with these three medium lasers and doing some kind of combination um, with that to maximize its maximize its relatively modest damage. So yeah, these these range flexible mechs are um, quite good in the middle of initiative. Um, yeah. All right, activating late. So the situation, um, activating late is generally safer or the safest um, position to be in. You can activate with more information than all the other positions. The last mech has pretty much perfect information, right? If you're the last mech to go, you can see where all your opponent's mechs have gone. You know where all your allied mechs have gone, and you can position yourself um, with perfect information, assuming there's no hidden units. Okay, so your goal here is to exploit a weakness in enemy positioning, right? So unlike the other positions where you're playing defensively to prevent an exploitation, here you're exploiting um, <clears throat> you're exploiting the position. So who should go late? Um, generally faster mechs with good firepower. The Wolverine's a good example here. Um, the Jenner's a good example. Um, and, the, and, and the Javelin. So lightly armored mechs that can hit hard. Um, so the Wolverine, the Locust again. Um, if the Locust activates late, um, it's usually trying to backstab. Um, you're not really trying to buy the turn anymore, so it's kind of multi-purpose that way. Javelin 10N, Hunchback 4G, and the King Crab. And we'll see why the Hunchback and the King Crab want to activate um, generally late or kind of middle late. Okay, so the ideal tactic you're going to perform with these mechs is striking. So I'll show you how to strike in this example where you're going late. So how to perform, you're going to hold back the Cavalry mech until the end. So here, um, the Wolverine is our Cavalry mech. In this example, again, we have the Warhammer and Thunderbolt. They've both activated, so now only the Wolverine is left to activate. You just move into the weak spot. Um, it's either, you know, rear and melee, um, or maybe to the weak, rotating to the weak side of the Thunderbolt if it has an, or sorry, weak side of the Warhammer or enemy mech if it has an open location. So you just move into the weak spot. That's it. <clears throat> As a bonus, while attacking one mech is good, attacking multiple mechs is better. Um, in this example, let's pretend you have another mech here that's you can also um, activate. But here, the Wolverine is threatening the rears of both the Warhammer and the Longbow. And that makes it very difficult for the Warhammer and Longbow um, to make a decision, right? As long as this Wolverine's unactivated, they don't know where it's going to go. So they have to account for all the possible moves um, that the Wolverine can go. And it forces them to awkward spots. So because they don't know where this Wolverine's going to go, um, you know, maybe the, Thunder, uh, maybe the Warhammer wants to move up but it can't. It's threatened by a flank that doesn't know is going to happen or not. So it has to kind of move maybe to the side. Um, maybe it needs to push out this way to, to defend the longbow. Maybe the longbow, although it wants to stay put, it doesn't know where the Wolverine is going to go. If it's going to attack the Warhammer or it's going to attack itself. So it needs to kind of turn turn itself, which reduces its accuracy. Or it needs to hide or do something, right? So you buy, just by holding the move, just the pure presence of this Wolverine unactivated puts these mechs, when they need to make a decision... Um, into into very hard spots and you can get a lot of value by just holding a mech um in that way okay so another tactic you can do is activating relatively late um in this example um we're pretty much talking about mechs like the uh king crab and hunchback um Mechs like these have AC-20s, right? They're built around the AC-20. So the King Crab is built around two AC-20s. The Hunchback's built around a single AC-20. They really want to get uh, value out of those AC-20s, right? If they're the King Crab, especially, it's very expensive. Um, if you're not able to push into six X's or less to get into effective range with your AC-20s, you're really missing out um, on the point of the King Crab. 
as well as as well as a hunchback, right? Um, it needs to get into six hexes, six hexes or less. So that's why um, they want to activate relatively late. Okay, so what do I mean by what do I mean by relatively late? Mechs that normally activate late can get can can activate earlier, so they can push their activation up to maybe the middle of the initiative or the late middle of the initiative, um, if they can get a good position without risk it without risk of it retaliation. So I'll show you two examples here. In this example, we have a king crab in the bottom left facing off against an enemy Orion, a brawler. Um, it's already activated. Even the uh, we have on the top. On the top right-hand corner, we have a archer who's unactivated and a hunchback who's unactivated. Here, the hunchback can't really um, get into position to attack the king crab. It's too far away. And here, the archer can hit the king crab, but it can hit the king crab regardless of where it goes. So it's kind of this area is kind of boxed off, right? If you kind of draw a line, not really. None of these mechs, none of these two mechs, can really affect the outcome of what's going to happen here, um, as long as the king crab kind of moves into maybe cover or something. Okay, so what do we do? Um, even though we're supposed to activate this guy late, we can activate this guy now um, because neither of these neither of these mechs can really affect the outcome of um, of the fight. So it's kind of isolated, right? I'll show you again. Um, here we have a javelin, um, and the Orion's activated. Now, technically, this vindicator is supposed to be defending um, from the javelin, but it gets pushed, it gets pulled away for whatever reason, and it's now fighting the Shadowhawk. So there's no defense for this Orion. Um, this, there's a kind of a line here, right? The Vindicator can't really affect the outcome of, um, of the fight here. So we can just pull our Javelin in here. We can activate it relatively late, even though it's kind of the middle of the initiative. Gets position. Um, and because this Vindicator is too far away, uh, yeah, it, it just kind of, you kind of just slice this off. Um, this actually enables um, the Shadowhawk, right? So now the Vindicator is forced to move. <clears throat> and now the Shadowhawk gets perfect position. It gets to activate um, late, right? So these, this activation sequence enables both mechs um, to, to get good position on the enemy. Okay, some additional tips. You want to play the obvious moves first. I would encourage you to do so. Sometimes both you and your opponent are know pretty much what's going to happen, right? And so you want to make those obvious moves um, first in order to hide later information. Um, this is a particularly, um, I guess, relevant in the opening phases of the game. So if you kind of move a range mech in position, right? If you position your awesome behind a hill um, with elevation behind cover, both you and your opponent are pretty much going to know where that artillery mech is going to go or that range mech is going to go. And so in the beginning of the activation sequence, you can just run it up there, right? Like everyone, everyone knows where it's going to go and it's no secret. And by doing that, you're hiding um, the later moves for your more important pieces, um, um, also closing with line breakers slash flankers, so just running them, running like a Jenner up the side, pretty much know where it's going to go. Excuse me. Um, or say like a king crab, like a line breaker, king crab or, or Atlas. Um, you pretty much know that it wants to close. Its game plan is just to close to brawl range and start slugging it out. So if you run forward with the king crab, it's not a surprise, not going to be a real surprise to your enemy most of the time. So you can make those moves first. Okay. Keep in mind the activating signal's intent. So some moves will show the enemy your plan. Um, for example, moving in with a flexible unit. So while the Thunderbolt can play rear, it can play, uh, can play you know far back for a time, or it can push forward into a brawl. By moving some mechs, you kind of show what your game plan is, right? Um, or if you decide to flank to the left, flank to the right, rather than kind of hold that move, and so your opponent doesn't know which direction you're going. So be careful um, activating will, you know, uh, show your opponent what you're going to do. So you want to generally hide those moves until later. Okay, activating near versus far. Activating when the enemy is far is generally safer because there's no threat from flanks. So here, um, in this activation sequence, or we have these um, mechs to activate, we want to activate our archer first. Um, why? Because it only has to worry really about um, return, return fire from the Warhammer, and it doesn't need to really worry about a flank. Whereas um, activating this Thunderbolt, um, he's near he's near the enemy, so he has to worry about like melee attacks. It's a little bit more dangerous. Um, maybe if this was a faster mech, it could you know move completely behind him and totally negate his attacks. Um, so yeah, so you, generally you want to activate far away mechs um, that have no no enemies around them um, first. Um, just keep in mind that activating close, um, especially when melee is an option, becomes very 
Very, very risky. Okay, things to know about lance building. Um, there is, if you're playing with quirks, a command mech quirk that gives you plus one to initiative and a battle computer, um, which gives you plus two to initiative, although it's a lot more rare. I think it's only on the Cyclops and a special version of the battle master. Um, but you probably pretty much, you want to have at least one in your company or one in your unit if you're playing a one-off game. <clears throat> um, some classic examples of that, sorry, are the Archer and the Wolverine. Um, I think there's a couple other command mechs out there, but those are usually your popular go-tos. Um, yeah, if you're playing with quirks, keep in mind that you can get a pretty pretty sizable advantage um, if, you're, if you run a command mech. Okay. Um, so overall, for lance building, you need to balance mechs who want to get the last turn and ones that are okay with going early. So there are certain greedy mechs, um, in particular the Jenner, right? Low armor, close range, very high value, so you can't really initiative sync with it. You really want to get um, close with these mechs. You can't run a lot of them um, because they're so greedy. Whereas flexible mechs are quite nice, things like the Grasshopper and Wolverine, combination of tanky and mobile. Um, so you can activate it middle or late in the initiative, right? The Grasshopper and Wolverine, pretty tanky. So you're not worried about them taking a couple hits um, for a few turns. And they also have jump jets um, so they can get behind if they get the opportunity. So you can run the middle or late. That gives your Lance, um, yeah, gives your Lance flexibility. Um, Catapult has LRMs and medium lasers. It's also quite tanky with good uh, good critical padding. So it really can go pretty much any um, in the any turn and get still get some value most of the time. Um, although it has some ideal ranges, um, you aren't too you aren't too fussed. Like it's probably not going to lose its entire uh, weapons turn if you um, if you you know if you're forced to use just the LRMs for a while. Okay, so we're going to come back to our lance example here. Given these mechs, which ones do you activate early? Which ones do you activate late? Starting off with the Locust. The Locust really here is our floater. Um, it can activate late and get a backstab on the opponent, but it's also very low value, so we, we don't mind losing our turn with it um, to, in order to buy more information. So we can activate it early. Really can activate anywhere in the initiative where I want to see another... Um, if I want to see another of the opponent's turn. So we kind of keep this one as a floater. Jenner here. Um, even though it's fast and um, like the Locust, uh, fast and low armored like the Locust, it really is high battle value. So we really want to activate it late and get it into backstabs under normal conditions. Um, in the openings, kind of okay to activate it earlier in the middle. But when it comes down to a fight, um, when, when fighting, we really want to activate it late. So very different from the Locust. Here, the Centurion. Um, Centurion is very similar to the Thunderbolts in which they're quite tanky and quite range flexible, so we're happy to activate them in the middle. Um, which one do we activate first? Kind of depends. Um, the Thunderbolt is a lot more tanky, so if, 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 the, if the situation is risky and I want to save my Centurion, um, the Thunderbolt can activate before the Centurion. If, um, if I want to get the Thunderbolt into uh, a better weapons range and it, things are relatively safe for the Centurion, I can activate it before. Um, the Thunderbolt, so really it's situation dependent, but generally we want to activate it in the middle. Wolverine here, very heavily armored um, and fast. We generally want to activate it late, but um, it, it does have quite a bit of armor, so we're happy to activate it kind of middle late, um, depending depending on the situation. And here the Awesome. Um, the Awesome, very tanky, very, very good range, so we generally want to activate it early in the initiative. The only thing we really need to worry about is making sure that the Awesome doesn't get outmaneuvered um, that it will have a target, but it's generally pretty easy to do so because of the good range, like I said before, of those PPCs. Um, so as long as the as long as the awesome has, um, we're pretty sure that the awesome has a target. Um, we can activate it relatively early. If we don't know, maybe we throw the um, we throw the locust there, or you know maybe we do something like this. But generally speaking, we're good to activate. Uh, the awesome early, okay? So that's how I would play out this Lance's initiative in a sort of general framework. That's it for this episode. Um, join the Discord for additional lecture notes and additional materials, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much.